Hey everybody, you know, I thought I'd just talk about something here because a lot of people have been talking about it, a lot of wrestling fans have been talking about it. Either you go to a wrestling forum, like Wrestling Forum on the Wrestling Insider, or Wrestling News World, or, or Richard Gray kind of answers your questions and stuff. But two of the major questions that fans have been having for the past few months throughout the summer are one, uh, are these two. And both, and the individually to the to the own, uh, own promotions, if you will. The first one, of course, is WWE, and the main question is, who the fuck, excuse my language, but who the fuck is the general manager of Raw? Everybody has been asking this since the day they started the stupid anonymous GM deal. And, you know, at first, like anybody else, I thought it was intriguing, I thought it was cool. But it's getting annoying now. It's like, come on, tell us who the hell the GM is and get it over with. I mean, when you think about it, when you think about it, they're now trying to do a storyline with Jericho and Edge, trying to find out who the GM is. Now, if Jericho does take some time off, which it sounds like he's going to, whether he has an extension or not, they're going to focus the storyline on Edge. There's no doubt about it. And Edge and whoever else joins him, like maybe Sheamus or somebody, is going to try to figure out who this GM is. They're going to try their best to figure out who the hell's pulling the strings, why at times he shows favoritism towards Nexus, and basically, you know, what's it going to take to get him to come out man to man and look them in the eye? That is the deal. Well, a lot of people have been guessing over the years, I mean, some people, I mean, not over the years, but over the past few months, a lot of people have been throwing out various names of who it could be. A lot of people are hoping it's Stone Cold. A lot of people are hoping it's The Rock. A lot of people hope perhaps it's Goldberg. But the two names that stick out on top, believe it or not, are Triple H and Michael Cole. That's the obvious. That's the obvious. Those are the two top uh, people that are uh, two top names that people choose. Fans are choosing to be the GM. And you know why? Well, first of all, I'll put it to you like this. I know the reason my fellow wrestling fans are hoping it's Stone Cold. My fellow wrestling fans are hoping it's The Rock. Our fans are even hoping it's Goldberg because they want a return to that attitude error. And sooner or later that's going to happen, there's no doubt about it. But they want people that they haven't seen on television back on WWE television. I mean, there's not a day that goes by, and let's not debate this, there's not a day that goes by that fans do not want to see Rock back in the WWE. They want him out of movies back in the ring. That's what they want. Same with Austin. They want him out of movies, out of television, movies and all that, and back in the ring, get surgery, whatever you want to call it, and just get back in the ring perform. That's what they want. That's why they're throwing the guesses, that's why they're throwing their names out, because that's what they want. And I'm not saying that's a bad deal. And as far as Goldberg goes, she has his negotiations and stuff going on for him to come back for WrestleMania, where he'll be probably inducted into the Hall of Fame, you mean all that, but still, the fans are throwing his name out because they want to see him come back. That's why these names are being thrown about, but believe it or not, I believe it's down to two people. It's going to be either Michael Cole or Triple H. And after what happened on NXT with Michael Cole, I think we might be leaning towards more of that direction because I believe Triple H, if he makes a comeback real soon, is going to want to focus more on being in the ring than being the general manager. Because let's not forget, he's got a situation storyline-wise with Sheamus. So they're going to want to finish that out before they move Triple H on to anything else. That's why I believe the top candidate, and I've said it before, for the anonymous GM is Michael Cole. Because even Richard Gray has pointed this out. People on various wrestling forums have pointed this out. And, they point, and that is, every time the GM sends an email, when Michael Cole opens up the laptop, you see all these words and everything, I mean, come on, who's going to buy the fact that the guy can, the, whoever the GM can do this? <laughs> type so fast that he gets it, you know, and set, get, type so fast that he gets it sent out before, um, you know, someone finishes the promos or after someone finishes the promos. I mean, come on. Who's going to believe that? So there's no doubt in my mind, it's got to be Michael Cole, and they're going to reveal it sooner or later. I, I just got that feeling. I have that feeling. 
Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If they go with Triple H, they go with Triple H. If they go with someone out of the blue, they go with someone out of the blue. But I believe right now the two top candidates are Michael Cole and Triple H. And right now, as of what happened on NXT, I believe it's got to be Michael Cole. Because, come on, they want to play him up as a heel. They want to play him up as the Miz's top fan, if you will. So it's got to be him. It's got to be him. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Now... Now, you can give me your own comments and everything on that, but that's all I'm going to say. Now, on to TNA and the decision Dixie Carter is going to make. It's going to change TNA forever. Well, I believe Dixie Carter is not going to make just one announcement on the 7th. I think she's going to make a couple of announcements. Because she says it's going to change, things are going to change in TNA forever. Well, I believe exactly what you know Richard Gray has said and what other people have said, fans and critics and stuff like that and marks and reporters and all that have said. And what they have said is that the, the announcement that Dixie Carter is going to make on the 7th is the fact that TNA is going to cut down on the pay-per-views. That's what I believe it's going to be. I, I, I believe it, just like anybody else. I believe that's, one of the, that's the major announcement. Because the pay-per-views I believe they're going to focus on more of will be Genesis, perhaps, but most definitely Lockdown, Slammiversary, and Battle for Glory. Those three, most definitely, Genesis, maybe because it's the first pay-per-view of the year. But the other ones I see being cut down and being turned into three-hour uh, TNA versions of Clash of the Champions, if you will. I mean, if you, if you can't recall what Clash of the Champions is, let me explain. Clash of the Champions was a bi-monthly or tri-monthly uh, two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour event that WCW put on on TBS. Basically, it was a two-hour, two-and-a-half free pay-per-view, if you will. And I believe that's what TNA is going to go with, but they're going to go three hours on Spike TV. And I believe it might get started with Turning Point. I could be wrong. But again, I think that's what's going to happen. That's going to be the major announcement. They're going to cut down on the pay-per-views. And the three or four pay-per-views they're going to focus on will be, perhaps, like I said, Genesis, because it's the first pay-per-view of the year, um, Lethal Lockdown, Slammiversary, and Bountiful Glory, most definitely. But that's the major announcement I see her making right there. Now, as far as some other announcements I believe she's going to make, I believe eventually she's going to make the announcement that fans have been wanting her to make since Hogan made the change earlier this year. And that is, she's going to try to get back the six-sided ring. That's what I believe she's going to do. She's going to get the six-sided ring back, eventually. I think that's going to be one of her major announcements. I could be wrong. Because she likes to give back to the fans. She wants to listen to what the fans want, so I believe that's what one of the, one of the announcements may be. And another announcement, I believe, is maybe she's going to say that Hogan and Bischoff aren't going to have so much camera time anymore, and it's going to focus more on the action in the ring. Again, I could be wrong, but that's what it looks like to me. So, those are just my thoughts on the whole WWE Anonymous GM deal, who, who I think it is, and what I believe the announcement is going to be that Dixie Carter is going to make on the 7th of October on the live impact, which is three days before Bound for Glory. So, those are my thoughts on them. Tell me what you guys think, and I'll talk to you all later.